so cache memory is a special a special very high speed memory it is used to speed up and synchronize with high speed cpu now the high speed cpu as i told you the the speed of the cpu is maybe 1.1.2 uh, uh gigahertz of uh, frequency speed or 2.4 gigahertz so uh, to match this particular speed the main memory cannot do that so main memory doesn't have that much of capability which will uh, which can transmit the data to the cpu at that particular high speed so to match with that we use uh, another type of memory which is called cache memory or cache memory okay whatever pronunciation you do you can do this cache memory is costlier than the main memory so definitely it is costlier because the speed is very high or disk memory uh, but it economical than cpu registers uh so i'll i'll show you or i'll tell you what a cpu register is so here it is saying that it is costlier than main memory and definitely the disk memory or the secondary memory but economical than cpu registers uh there are cpu register uh, so if we'll compare with the cpu register it is economical to that cache memory is an extremely fast memory type that act as a buffer between ram and the cpu so as i told you we have secondary memory we have main memory and we have cpu we have secondary memory we have main memory and we have cpu so cpu will interact with the ram and ram will interact with the secondary memory but in between the ram and the cpu there is another type of memory is called cache memory and this cache memory will store uh, the data which is most recently used by the cpu so that the speed will be match up with the cpu okay okay it holds uh, frequently requested data and instruction so that they are immediately available to the cpu when needed so as i told you it is most recently used a uh, data or the instruction will be there in the cache memory so that the cpu will get that particular data whenever it is required at a very fast speed it provide uniform interface between the kernel and the controller and the kernel which one the cache uh, the cache memory will provide a uniform interface between controller and the kernel let's go and see this particular architecture so let's say if uh, we have some high speed ram like uh, ddr ram okay ddr 1. Point something and 2. Point something there are many version of ddr okay some version and some of the version are very fast and this may match the speed of the cpu but you know that today's in the today's computer system there is no one cpu available there are in one cpu there are different cores available and each core is working or acting as one cpu so you see when the speed of one core is uh, let's say 2.5 giga gigahertz so you assume that all the cores has how many requests uh, will fetch into the main memory and how much faster it is the request so to fulfill that particular speed we required some sort of cache memory so the cache memory is in between your main memory this is your main memory which is available so let me write it here so this is your main memory right and this is your cache memory so as we have discussed that cpu is directly uh, connected with the main memory no it is not because in between there is a cache memory and you see here this cache memory is called as ram as ram means static ram and this uh, uh, 
main memory is called dynamic RAM. So the cost of uh, per bit storage in the RAM is like per bit will be stored in per cell. And one cell will be made of one capacitor is there, one uh, uh, voltage circuitry will be there, which is an input output uh, uh, um, way. And there is, a, there is another uh, controller are there, or um, a microcontroller, small microcontrollers are there. In the RAM, for the per bit storage, we required six cell. So it is costlier than that. So it is six times costlier than DRAM, you can see. So to store one bit in SRAM, we required six cell and one cell is, uh, as I told you, made of with one capacitor, or you can say the combination of the uh, flip-flop where we store the uh, data or the voltage, the, the bit in the form of voltage. Either it will be a zero volt or some sort of two voltage um, in that particular capacitor, which will tell us that it is a one bit or zero bit. So that's why it is six times costlier than RAM, first of all. Uh, that's why uh, we do not make the RAM size very bigger because for responsible for storing one bit, it required six L. And uh, in the RAM, for per bit, it required one cell to store one, one cell. So definitely it is more dense. And uh, if we want to create, let's say, uh, 4 GB of SRAM, it will be more costlier, six times more costlier than RAM. And the, the circuitry will be more complex. So that's why the size of the cache memory is very smaller as well as because it is costlier and uh, it is very high speed. High speed means definitely if we have a small memory and so here the read write way of uh, using that is making it a very high speed. Internally how it is working, the SRAM, how, how SRAM is working, how DRAM is working, I'll take another session for that. For today, you just assume that the cache memory is costlier than the uh, main memory as well as faster than the main memory. So that's why we use as an interface between uh, the main memory and the CPU. So it is acting as that. So I think you understood where we have to place the cache memory. <clears throat> so you see, here we have three type of cache memory available. First one is called level. Okay, so there is some um, uh, spelling mistake. It will be level one, then there is a level two, and then there is level three. So this is, yeah. So this is level one, which is called L1 cache. The L1 cache is attached with each and every CPU. So inside the CPU, we have cache. This is the, is this one you can, you can say this is L1 cache. This is L1 cache. So every C, so this is one CPU and there are different cores of it. So you can say that this is one processor, this is another processor, this is another processor. So we have four processor available in our, let's say, uh, four processor uh, uh, CPU. Or if we have a eight processor, we have eight processor, uh, eight process, eight uh, core CPU. Then eight processor will be there. So the cache is inside the CPU, and this particular is called L1. Here, the memory size of this these type of L1 cache is two KB to sixty four KB. And what we'll store here? So in the level one crash, uh, we'll store the uh, the data and the instruction. So we have two type of cache area in each and every cache inside the each and every core. So 
this particular has two part you can say one part will store the instruction another part will store the data one part will store the instruction another part will store the data in that way and the memory size you know it is from 2 kb to 64 kb depend upon the processor to processor this is called l1 cache let's go and try to understand what is l2 cache so what is l2 cache l2 cache is outside the cpu this is l2 cache it is slower than l1 cache and the size it will be 256 kb to 512 kb and this particular uh, l2 cache is you can uh, see that the so this is your l2 cache you can see this is your l2 cache which is outside the cpu it is slower than l1 cache then we have l3 cache l3 cache is again uh, slower than l1 and l2 but and and the size is 1 mb to 8 mb but uh, let me remind you this l3 this the speed is slower but it is more faster than ram or more faster than the main memory okay so there may be the hierarchy of it let's say we have uh, let's say this is a cpu or your one processor then l1 will be residing here let's assume that l1 is here then we have l2 cache from which your cpu will take the data then we have l3 cache so l3 cache uh, from from where l2 will take the data and from l3 there is a main memory okay so main memory and then there is a secondary memory right so this is how your hierarchy is in some system you will get l1 l2 and l3 in some system you will get l2 or or l3 or l2 l3 okay so it depend upon which type of processor and uh, what architecture or what configuration you are taking for your computer system so this is all about cache so i think you understood what is the meaning of cache cache is nothing but a uh, faster memory and will store only the recently used data there which will be useful for the cpu right now so whatever the data which is uh, useful or, or recently used for the cpu will store those data into the cache memory and uh, this particular cache memory size is small the reason is it is very costlier costlier than uh, main memory and uh, there are three type of cache memory available l1 l2 and l3 L1 is inside the CPU or inside the processor. L2 is outside the processor, and L3 is again slower than that. It is also outside the processor, slower than L1 and L2 cache. So this is all about your cache memory, which we say cache or. So all these memory is required uh, to send the data from this. Let's say the hard drive. to the ram and to the uh, cache memory and ultimately to the cpu because every data will be processed into the cpu so that's why it is it is required uh, and we have to send all these data to the cpu and from the res from the cpu the result will be again go back into that particular hierarchy of the memory so this is the process flow that how your data is going to process so it is start with the hard drive or the secondary memory so from the secondary memory it can go to the from the secondary memory the data will go to the uh, main memory from the main memory it will go to the l3 cache from the l3 cache it will go to the l2 cache from l2 it will go to the l1 and this let me tell you this l1 in the l1 cache 
L1 cache is inside the CPU, right? It is, it is looking like it is outside the, but it is inside the CPU. And from the L1 cache, the data will go inside, go to the CPU. And if, if in the cache, in the cache memory, if the instruction which is required by the CPU is available, that is called cache hit. And if the instruction is not there in the cache, it is called cache miss. So that is a phenomena uh, which we use. So if any instruction is required and it is there in the cache, in, in any, if let's say if the instruction is there in L1 cache, that phenomena is called cache hit. Let's say we, we are looking for L1, it is not there. We are looking for L2, it is not there. Then it is called cache miss. It is, it is not there in L3, it is also called cache miss for L3. If it is, if it is uh, not there in a RAM, that is also called mesh miss. And then it will uh, request to the hard drive to load that particular data into the RAM. And from the RAM, it will take to L3 and then L2 and then L1 and then CPU. So this is how your data flow take place into the computer system. 